So thank you very much for having invited me to talk here today uh, at the Compliance Week. My name is Rick Serrano. I'm very happy to be here with you and I'm going to be talking to you very briefly about the ethical issues facing artificial intelligence, which is a topic that I have been studying for some years now. And this is going to be a very short presentation or a very short version of the original presentation on the matter. Um, but we have limited time, so I'm going to be, um, I'm going to try to be very quick and I will go through the slides quickly, but of course we, we can have a moment for Q and A in the end. Let me start by saying very quickly uh, that I am a total enthusiast about AI. I'm fascinated by AI. I recently completed the program of artificial intelligence by the University of Oxford, which is really great. And I recommend you uh, to, for everybody. I have um, very positive views on AI, and I believe the positive aspects of this technology are simply undeniable. However, um, something worries us, and that is precisely why we are here today. So I'm going to be talking to you about the ethical questions or the ethical issues confronting AI. Let me start by saying that these issues are not new, just like AI is not new. If you think that AI is something new, let me, let me tell you that this is not the case. AI was actually uh, invented many, many years ago. The term was coined by uh, John McCarthy, a professor at Dartmouth University up in Northeastern USA. And he uh, came up with this term back in 1956. And just in the same way that artificial intelligence is nothing new, the concerns or the ethical concerns of AI are also not new. We find books already back uh, from 1982, 2011, 2014, 2018, and so forth. And, and, and then an explosion of books and, and essays have has emerged on this subject of the ethical issues facing AI. I have been interested in AI since around 2020, 2021, when I first started to create my first videos on the subject, you can find them uh, on my YouTube channel. And the, the, the topic is really fascinating and is very wide, a very big topic. I will be just uh, giving you some highlights. So at that, at, in those years, so in 2021, when I started studying this, this phenomenon, uh, what we had different ethical issues, different the ones that we face today. Let me, very quickly mention what those issues were in those years. Well, first of all, everybody, we were all concerned with the question of responsibility. In other words, who do we blame when something goes wrong in the world of AI? Who do we give the responsibility to? And this is a very complex thing because it has many derivatives. And when we talk about responsibility, this has many angles. Let me show just very quickly some of them. First of all, to have responsibility or to make somebody responsible of something, the, there's a question of consciousness. So um, the, the individual needs to be uh, conscious of what is happening. And this becomes especially challenging when we talk about machines, because the question of consciousness is, of course, not that evident. Then there's a second derivative, and that is who decides. So in the processes where AI intervenes and something goes wrong, who exactly is making what decisions? Then the, com the situation gets even more complex when you think that the, the person or the machine deciding might not only be one entity, but might be different entities making different decisions at different stages. So this becomes even more complicated. Now, to make things even a little bit more complicated, we have the question of, okay, uh, people or machines or algorithms making decisions are making those decisions based on what? So based on what kind of principles, what kind of values, what is below the decision making uh, of those uh, operations, those decisions? So, and then they, here you have basically three alternatives. Do we take a, what is called a democratic approach? So what the majority thinks that, that is going to be right and that is going to be wrong. Or is it a question of authority? Whoever has a higher rank has a higher decision. Or is it a question of expertise? Whoever knows that for it. So as you see, the picture of responsibility is really very complicated. Now, 
Responsibility was at that time and it is still today a top issue, but it's definitely not the only one. There are many others. And my colleagues will talk to you about some of them uh, in a moment, but let me just uh, mention some of them. So responsibility is number one. Now, the second one is the question that I say, who inputs what ethics into AI? That means if we're going to program the machines, if we're going to program the algorithms to follow ethics, okay, first of all, who inputs those ethics and what kind of ethics do we have? And for this, there are different options. For example, is it the regulators? Or is it high tech companies? Because maybe high tech companies are the ones who really understand about this. Or is it maybe academia? So is it maybe educated professors, you know, at MIT, at Harvard, at, at, at Cambridge, at Oxford, making these decisions? Who is it who should input this ethics into AI? Or is it probably better that we create think tanks specially dedicated to this? Or do we want to have a mix of this? Well, this is not clear at all. This is being discussed. All, uh, all over the world and it is definitely not yet clear so this is the second second big topic so who inputs what ethics into ai then there are other other topics that uh, again my colleagues will touch in a moment like for example the risk of bias so decisions are, are made with some bias in them or the question of transparency how can you make sure that things are happening exactly here exactly there exactly with this or that process and of course, the big, big topic of legal versus ethical. Legal and ethical are not necessarily the same thing. So you can be perfectly ethical and you can be illegal, but you can also be perfectly legal and perfectly unethical. So that's another big issue that we were discussing uh, for uh, in, the, in, the, in the past years. And of course, everybody, we were all discussing about the famous trolley problem. So what do we go? Do we kill this or do we call those? So those were the topics the ethical topics that we had up until relatively recently, those were the topics that we had a little bit before. But then what happened? Then what happened? Then what happened is that the tsunami arrived. The tsunami specifically arrived on the 30th of November 2022. And I know that you know that I am referring to ChatGPT. ChatGPT basically put AI in the hands of billions of people. Just to give you an idea, according to some of the recent information, uh, ChatGPT has over 100 million users and the website currently generates close to 2 billion visits per month and um, despite of some people forbidding it, okay? But anyway, the technology has been embraced super, super, super quickly. So this is the time that it has taken the different platforms to reach 1 million users. So you can see that, for example, it took more than, than 1,000 days for Netflix to reach 1 million users. And uh, it took all, almost like 500, um, 500 days to, for example, uh, Facebook to reach the million users. But it took literally days uh, for ChatGPT to reach the first million of users. So it's really a technology that expanded tremendously rapidly. Now, uh, here you can also see uh, the comparison with the adoption of Instagram and the adoption of ChatGPT, you can see how brutally this the expansion has been. So all of that has created new ethical questions. So what are the new ethical questions that we confront now? Let me show you. So first of all, let me say that we have all the previous questions. All the previous questions are still valid today. They remain. Plus, we have new ones. Uh, first of all, let me point to the topic of identity. Are you really you? So in a world where artificial intelligence is in the hands of everybody and people can cr create, quote unquote, create new things, uh, basically in any form, in any style, then the question of are you really you is not an evident one. I invite you to check out on YouTube a, a very famous video called The Next Rembrandt and you will understand what I'm talking about. You can literally create things like somebody else and this is very risky you can literally create a poem like Pablo Neruda or you can create a poem like Robert Frost but it's you creating it and 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 and, and it's and, and we can use the verb to create because it's something that did not exist before so it's not taking it from somewhere else in the internet and that is a very particular challenge of this technology so that's the first point the question of identity second point is a question of authenticity can we tell in this new world, can we tell easily 
what is fake and what is not? Well, the answer, of course, is not. It's very complicated to tell when things are fake and things are real. That's the second big topic question of authenticity. Third big topic, privacy. And again, my colleagues will elaborate more on this, but basically your data are everywhere. And whether you like it or not, whether you have GDPR or not, whether you accept the cookies or not, basically everybody has your data. Uh, it's as simple as that. And that's a third big problem. A fourth big problem is, of course, the question of intellectual property rights. Are the property rights being able to be defended still in a world where AI is so ubiquitous? That's a big, big question. And fifth, uh, I should briefly mention, of course, the impact on jobs, but not also the impact on jobs, but also the dehumanization of processes on everything that has to do with human beings. And the, the impact of jobs, as you know, it might, is going to be considerable. Of course, there are a positive side and a negative side, but in any case, it's going to be uh, not insignificant. The World Economic Forum estimates that approximately 69 million new jobs will be created, but 83 million will be destroyed. That means that a balance of uh, about 14 million jobs will be lost over the next five years. And that is, of course, considerable. And I would argue that we don't even need to look at the balance of it, but we really need at the numbers that get lost because those are, of course, real people, real individuals. So, and again, the World Economic Forum estimates that nearly a quarter of employees will change jobs, not necessarily lose their jobs, but change jobs due to the advent, the advent of the new technologies. So that's also another very important impact. Now, let me comment to you on what, what is frequently referred to as the paradox of the 90 versus 90, 90% versus 91% paradox. And that is that if you ask a, a group of people, uh, do you think that AI will, um, will modify, destroy jobs? 90% of the people will answer yes. But if you ask to those same people whether they think that AI will impact their jobs, 91% of people answer, no, not mine. And that, of course, is not very sustainable. Anyway, the biggest question remains being responsibility with all the derivatives that I told you. So the consciousness, who decides based on what, that's a major topic. Now, let me give you super quickly a couple of examples. So consider the example, for example, on healthcare of an AI-operated system that decided to extract a cancer tumor and, and, and then the patient dies. So, is the dia who is here to blame? Is it the diagnosis software company? Is it whoever programmed the algorithm? Is it whoever operated the machine? Is it other medical systems that are interconnected? Is it the doctor? Is it the hospital? So this is not clear, as you can see. It's not easy to tell. Another example. Uh, imagine an AI-operated defense system that orders a bombing and many civilians get killed and the enemy is barely affected. So who's here to blame? Is it the AI strategic software company? Is it whoever programmed that algorithm? Is it whoever operated the weapons? Is it the other defense systems that are interconnected? Is it the general or the captain who ordered the AI attack? Or is it the army who bought the equipment? And the question goes and goes and goes and goes. So, so this is only to tell you that the biggest remaining question is the question of responsibility. Now, there are several aspects why we can be optimistic about AI. Let me just super quickly point to some of them. First of all, speed of production. We will be able to produce at, an, at a speed that is simply unknown to human being. We will be creating a lot more. We will be cross-fertilizing, so from one discipline to the other, we will be enriching the, the different disciplines we'll be crossing. We will have, uh, we will be able to compare things and compare knowledge from one field to the other, compare them and then drive in very, very interesting conclusions. You can do this today with ChatGPT. We will also have, I, I believe, a huge potential for creativity and innovation because AI literally helps you to create new things. And if you use it with a, with a creative approach, it's amazing what you can do. And last but not least, definitely we will have new jobs as well. Some examples of new jobs, we will have AI strategies, AI content development, AI ethicists, AI security officers, AI trainers, AI engineers, and so forth. And of course, tons and tons of data analysts. So 
Um, this is uh, the topic of AI and ethics. Uh, what, what I have done uh, last year is I have created a so, uh, sort of like a framework to apply AI uh, at, uh, at companies. And I recommend that companies sort of follow um, this uh, uh, framework. Basically what I, what I tried to do, what I've tried to do, do is to put in the, in the center, I locate, I place the dignity of the human person. So the human being is going to be in the center. And then I created a seven spike model that covers the different areas that I believe that should be started when trying to apply AI. So the question of consciousness, the question of transparency, traceability, responsibility, training, lots of training, intellectual property uh, protection, regulation. And this is um, uh, from my perspective, uh, what uh, should be uh, covered uh, to have a human base, a human centered approach. Again, the dignity of the human person is in the middle. So um, some things that companies could do, of course, first of all, I say, let's face reality. You have to be aware of this is that this is happening. Provide the tools, not block the tools, but provide the tools. Training for understanding, which is training people on how to use the tools, training for creativity, train the people to create new things with those technologies, and of course, work a lot in the lines of safety and security. So in a nutshell, this is what my, my, my talk is about and my book is about. I have here some copies of Artificial Intelligence the Importance of a Human-Centric Approach. If anybody would like to have a copy, I'll be glad. Uh, to give it to you here. I have some of them. And if you want to listen to the full presentation, uh, because this is, of course, just a brief abstract, you can, you can go to my YouTube channel, Rick Serrano, and there you find different presentations uh, in, uh, in various languages as well. You can check them out. Well, with that, I thank you very much. And thanks to Jeb for the invitation. And I will see you here for the next one. Goodbye.